Good morning and welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Parker's Prairie. We're thankful that you're joining us here today. Uh, today we, uh, we'll look at the, the Old Testament lesson. The sermon will be based off of those words that God says to Job. And a reminder of God's greatness and how he takes care of the earth. And so we begin with our opening hymn, Earth and All Stars, number 817. Earth and all stars, loud rushing planets, sing to the Lord a new song. Loud shouting army, sing to the Lord a new song. He has done marvelous things. I too will praise him with a new song. Hail wind and rain, loud glowing snow. Storm, sing to the Lord a new song. Flowers and trees, loud rustling dry leaves, sing to the Lord a new song. He has done marvelous things. I too will pray him with a new song. Knowledge and truth, loud sounding wisdom, sing to the Lord a new song. Daughter and son, loud praying members, sing to the song. He has done marvelous things. I too will praise him with a new song. Children of God, dying and rising, sing to the Lord with a new song. Heaven and earth, host everlasting, sing to the Lord a new song. He has done marvelous things. I too will praise him with a new We make our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, by your confession, 
and by, and by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak the words of the intro, which come from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look on him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We continue with the glory in excelsis. Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all our harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for today comes from Job chapter 38, verses 4 through 18. The Lord said to Job, where were you when I laid its foundation of the earth, when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined in measurements? Surely you know. Oh, who or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? And who who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it, when, it, when it burst out from the womb, when I made clouds its, its garment and, and thick darkness its swaddling bit hand and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus, thus far shall you come and no farther. And here shall you your proud waves be stayed. Have you com commanded the morning since your, your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? 
that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like day, like clay under the seal and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld and their, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson for today comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandment shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will, de who will, who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on, his, on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they that call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Holy Gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him on the, to the other side, while he dis diminished the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, after he had dismissed the crowds, <laughs> he went up on the, on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by his by, by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to, to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue our service by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn, From All That Dwells Below the Skies, hymn 816. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? We ask that question in our daily lives. Where were you? Or maybe even where are you? And depending on the context of that question... You never know what to expect when you hear that question. Those words, those three words can be confusing, troubling, or it can meant, be meant to bring joy. Think about if, if you missed a big party, a big celebration, and someone says, where, where, where were you? You missed a huge celebration. We wish that you would have been here. It's meant with care, right? And, and, and we wanted to see you. But I was thinking of other times where this may be used in maybe not as good of a way. Maybe parents have said that to their kids. Where were you? 
<laughs> I know I got that question a few times as a kid. It was dark. Why weren't you back inside? Parents can have concern for their kids, so there's a genuine care and concern behind that question. Even though it may come across to a kid as negative, there's care and concern behind it. But maybe it comes with a relationship with a friend or a spouse, maybe even. Where were you? I was counting on you, and you weren't here. You see, there's different forms of that question. Where were you? And we look at the, the Old Testament lesson for today with Job, and it's no different. The question that Job asks God, I'm sure he was thinking, God, where have you been? Let's go back in, the, in time to the beginning of Job, where Job is known as a faithful follower of God, that his faith is very strong. And God and Satan have a conversation, and God says, you can do anything you want, just don't take his life. You see, there's a relationship there. God as the creator, Satan as the created. And so Satan can do whatever he wants within whatever God allows him to do. God tells him, do anything, but don't take his life. And Satan does that. He takes his, his land, his animals, his livestock, his wealth, his home, his security, his wife, all his sons and daughters. Everything that Job had was gone, except these three friends of his. And the three friends say to Job, Hey, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Be done with it. Why would you continue to follow this God who's taken everything from you? It doesn't make sense that you would want to do that. Why? Why follow him? But Job's faith remains steadfast. And he, God remains faithful to Job. But in the middle of the book of Job, Job starts to question God. And he starts to wonder, God, where were you? Where are you? And God is silent for many chapters in the book of Job. And just probably when Job was about at his wit at wit's end, as maybe you can relate, God speaks. <laughs> and he doesn't say what you might think he would say. You might think that he would be like a loving father or loving uh, someone who cares for you. And may, may, you may have a picture of God putting his arm around Job and saying, hey, I'm with you. But instead of answering that question of why am I suffering, Job asks, asks that question too. Why am I suffering? Why are these things happening to me? Instead of answering that question, God responds and he says, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And he pulls out the creator card. He says, Job, I am the God of the universe. And he talks about, have you ever been to the depths of hell? Have you ever been to the depths of the sea? Or do you make the sun rise every morning, Job? Because I do. And I was thinking about that this week. And these words hit me pretty hard because I don't know if you're like me, but if you've been living in the last few months, you probably thought, boy, it sure would be nice if we could see a sign from God at some point. And then these words came along this week and it reminded me of who God is. And it always humbles me to think about God, to think how he sustains the earth, to think about how we have all these material blessings that we have that we take for granted so often. You think about it, if you drove a car and it was reliable, that's a blessing from God that you're able to have that. The fact that you have food on your table to eat, it's a blessing from God. The fact that you breathe, it's a gift from God. He's the creator of life and the one who takes life away sometimes. 
You see, we have so many blessings from God that we forget about all the things that he does in the world. You think about all the amazing things that God has done, created the world by speaking. In seven day, six days, he created in the seventh day he rested. God is God, and we live in this relationship that God is our creator, and we are the created. That there is a certain level that we will never reach in this lifetime because we are sinful human beings. And so God not only asks that question, or Job not only asks that question, where were you? But God asks it too. And he asks it in that sense of, I am the creator and I will take care of my created beings. You see, that's what God does for us. Just a few weeks ago, we were in dire need of rain and it rained for a couple of days. And now we're probably in a, a season where we need a little more rain again. But God sustains the world. He sustains life. It's amazing to think all the blessings that we have in this world. And it's no coincidence that in the midst are, are that, that those people who set up the, our, our lessons put the gospel lesson in this reading as well. Where, where Jesus walks on water. You know that story. So last week we talked about Jesus feeding the 5,000 in the gospel lesson. And in that lesson, Jesus was trying to get away to pray, remember? And he's trying to get away to pray, and then all these people keep following him, and so he has compassion on them. And he heals their sick, and he feeds over 5,000 people that day. And then, as the evening came, he dismisses the disciples, and he dismisses the crowd, and he goes away to pray. And he takes time to be with God. And to spend time with him. And then, as the, the disciples are getting further and further away on the Sea of Galilee, and the waves are taking them further and further away from the shore, and they're not able to come back in because of the waves, Jesus goes out and he walks on the water. And at first they're afraid, and they say it's a ghost. But then it says that Jesus immediately calmed their fears. And he said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter being Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out to you. And Jesus says, come. One word, that's it. And Peter gets out of the boat and he walks on the water. Think about how amazing that is. We've all been swimming before. I don't think any of us have ever walked on the water. But there in that moment, Jesus and Peter walk on the water. And Peter sees the waves and he starts to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and grabs Peter and he saves him. And he says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And I was thinking about that in that moment. This is one of my favorite stories from the Bible with Peter. Because it doesn't say that Jesus let Peter flail in the water and think about what he had done. He doesn't, it doesn't say that Jesus kind of points and laughs at Peter and says, ah, you should have believed in me. No, he grabs him and he saves him immediately. And when the disciples think it's a ghost before that, he immediately says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Where were you? He's always been right here, immediately saving us. From the time of Adam and Eve when they sinned, God had a plan to save his people. And he carried out that plan in Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. Where were you? It humbled me when I thought that I had asked God that question and had the nerve to ask God that question. 
it humbled me because God is the God of the universe. But he cares for his people and he reaches out immediately and he cares for his people. Where were you? Jesus' words come back. When after he sees Peter, he says, Oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? Why do we doubt God? Why do we doubt his promises? Because of sin. Thankfully, Jesus took care of those sins, right? Thankfully, we have a God who saved us from our sins. He came and walked the earth in the flesh of Jesus Christ. He walked on the water. He immediately calms the disciples' fears. He immediately calms Peter, or grabs Peter and saves him. And he reminds us immediately of his promises, too. He reminds us that, yes, he is the creator and we are the created. But we also remember his, his love and we remember his presence with us. As you go about your week this week, hold on to those promises. Cling to those promises of God. Remember that there is nothing that can separate you from God's love. Remember that he is always with you, that he will never leave you or forsake you, that no matter how bad things get, he's right there with you and immediately reaches to you. He's, he's the God who keeps his promises. And we have the hope that one day we will live with him forever. There's no greater hope that we have. May we remember those promises and may we always cling to, to the fact that God is our God who is always faithful to those promises. In the name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our Savior. Amen. We continue our service with the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we come before you humbly, knowing that you are our God. Lord, we thank you for all the times that you save us, for all the blessings that you give to us, Lord. May we be reminded of those promises and know that in all things you are working for the good, for those who love you. In your, mer in, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for, for the examples of the people in the Bible, Lord, who, who give us that, that faith, who have passed that faith along. Lord, we thank you for generations of people who have, who have shared their faith, Lord. And may we continue that in, in our words and in our deeds. Lord, we pray for our seminaries. We pray for our universities. We pray for our schools. We pray for the leaders of schools who are making difficult decisions right now, Lord. Be with parents. Give them patience and wisdom. And be with the students as they, as they prepare to go back to school. Lord, we pray for each of the, those people and may they, they know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country. We pray for those who serve you in the military. We give you thanks for our first responders and, and police officers and our military, Lord, who serve our country. Lord, we pray for our president and for our governor and all the people who serve as politicians, Lord. May they be reminded of your presence and may they work together to, to serve you and to serve the country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have specific needs. There's many in our midst. And so today we pray for AJ and Norman, for Laurel and Tony, Tom, for Darren and Cheryl, for Tim and Deb, for Donna and Ron, for Lois, for Hildegard, for Jerry, for Donovan, for Roxy, for Tony, for Nick, for Rosamond and Elaine, for Lisa and Mary and Corey and Nettie and Cynthia and John and Sue and Roger and Mary and Carol. Lord, you know each of their needs, and may they humbly be reminded of your presence with you. Be with the doctors and nurses who care for them as well, and may they be reminded of your presence as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for all those who have been impacted by COVID-19, for those who are ill, those who have lost jobs or income, 
those who are in the healthcare field, those in our government making difficult decisions, and everyone be in between, Lord. Give us patience and grant us wisdom during this time. And Lord, may we, we, we remember your presence during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life. We give you thanks for those who celebrate birthdays, for Orvin and Don and Merle. Lord, may, may we, they be reminded of, of your goodness and your mercy and the gift of, we thank you for the gift of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for the family of Ron Kep as they mourn his loss. May they be reminded of, of, of the hope that we have in your risen son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, all these things and many other things that are on our hearts and minds, we lift up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his eternal peace. Amen. We continue with our hymn, How Great Thou Art, hymn 801. God to thee, 
Just a couple of announcements for you this morning. Uh, reminder that there will be uh, communion for the parking lot service. We'll have parking lot service the rest of the month. Um, and communion will be on the 16th and the 30th. And then we'll be inside on August 23rd and have communion inside if you'd like to come for worship here inside the sanctuary. Also, August 16th, for you guys who watch online, Pastor Winter will be preaching. Pastor Winter is a retired pastor um, who's a member of Emmanuel, so he's excited to be able to bring God's word to you. He'll bring it outside uh, today, and then on the 16th, he'll bring it to you, God's word to you online as well. So we give thanks to God for his blessings and God's blessings on your week. <laughs> 